Welcome back everyone, and before we get into the news, I want to take a moment and let you know about a big change that's happened here on the YouTube channel. So typically we would post news, reviews, and how-tos guides along with raw gameplay footage here on this channel, and that will no longer be the case. The raw gameplay will be po hosted over on its own channel, which will be WCCF Tech Plays. There we will also be performing gaming live streams where we'll take new games as they come out and we'll be able to live stream them and take questions from viewers uh, you know, into company new reviews. So hopefully you guys like the change for there. If you would, I will link down in the pinned comment, not only the source for this video, but a link to that channel as well if you're interested in checking it out. Now let's get back to the news. So a tech publication on Facebook, IT Cooker, and this of course comes via video cards, has leaked the first testing of an Intel PCIe 4.0 system. Now the platform being tested is the upcoming Intel Rocket Lake, which is scheduled for release in 2021. Now PCIe 4.0 SSDs are going to provide a significant uplift in storage performance and will likely be necessary for games that feature asset streaming. The benchmark itself was done on Seagate's Firecuda PCIe 4.0 drive and an 11th generation coupled with a Z490 motherboard. Now the leak appears to stem from Taiwan and they claim they had access to a next generation CPU which they tested on a Z490 motherboard. Considering the only next generation CPU that will work on a Z490 is Rocket Lake, it's really not hard to guess what they used. The screenshot provided shows that the CPU Z is not able to properly read the samples which means there are likely an early engineering sample. Now since Rocket Lake S fits just fine in the LGA 1200 socket, customers with a Z490 motherboard will have a clear upgrade path when the SKUs land in 2021. So the crystal disk mark shown had a read speed of 5 gigabytes per second and a write speed of 4.2 gigabytes per second sequential. Now this is only possible on PCIe Gen 4.0. But this also means that you're going to see storage devices that greatly exceed this for cheap very soon and just in time to fill for the next gen console launch. We're already seeing the new Samsung 980 drives coming on and the new Fizon E18 drives are doing the same thing where they're pushing up to 7500 on the reads and over 5000 on the writes which is really impressive. Now when you take this and you couple it with tech like RTX IO, blazing fast SSDs are going to be a major upgrade point for consumers. The RX 5700 XT GPU was stress tested with Furmark and GPU-Z showed a PCIe 4.0 active in by 16 mode as well. Now Rocket Lake S is based on the 14 nanometer process, but unlike older generations, it will feature a revamped architecture, which will be Willow Cove, PCIe 4.0 support, and XE graphics. Think of it as a backport of the advanced architecture reserved for 10 nanometer to 14 nanometer, so the company can maximize utilizing its foundry capacity. Since it's based on the 14 nanometer process, a leaked benchmark by Geekbench, of course this is from Rogame, indicates that it will be able to boost upwards to 5 GHz, which is typical for the highly mature process right now, allowing for the best of both world situations where the new architecture is able to hit the ground running, speaking from a clock speed perspective of course, because of the highly mature node. Backporting is usually a double-edged sword because if 10 nanometer isn't able to sufficiently compete in terms of power efficiency gains, the loss in clock speed from shifting to the infant 10 nanometer process when that happens could result in reduced performance from the bar that Rocket Lake is going to set when it launches. Now in the meantime, however, it's great news for enthusiasts because Rocket Lake is going to be the first major new architecture in a very long time coming to the desktop. Now, early benchmarks of the platform were spotted over at Geekbench and they are expected to come to market sometime in late 2020 or possibly early 2021. A 5 gigahertz boost clock combined with a major new architecture should offer the best co possible combination for a performance upgrade for the Intel customers, although at the cost of similar TDP in a very long time, and I'm personally really excited to see how it performs. Now backporting could also turn out to be Intel's saving grace as it misstepped on 10 nanometer and now again on 7 nanometer. For more on this and other news, follow the link in the description and make sure you're subscribed and hit the notification bell so that we don't miss you in the next one.